Hi, Russell, welcome to The Reading Fabricator. And today, I don't really have much to talk about in terms of this reading vlog. I've only read two, uh, two books, uh, both of which I haven't finished in the last week. But in those two books, I found fascinating material which I wish to share with you. Uh, so the first one is actually two, two stories I read from this book here. Flannery O'Connor's Complete Stories. First time I've ever read this. Now there are lots of booktubers out there and lots of bookstagrammers out there, lots and lots of people who refer to Flannery O'Connor as one of their favorites and many, many critics out there who refer to her as one of the greatest short story writers who ever lived, especially of the 20th century in America. Um, I was a bit hesitant going into it. I've had this book for a while now and Everyone kept saying, you need to read A Good Man, a good man Is Hard to Find. You need to read Good Country People. You need to read Everything That Rises Must Converge. Um, I don't know why I just didn't do it, but on the weekend, I thought, all right, let's do it. So I read two of the short stories. I read um, A Good Man Is Hard to Find and Everything That Rises Must Converge. And uh, holy shit, they were good. I mean, <laughs> I can believe the hype. I can believe the hype. They are just magnificently written. They're stark. Um, I can see why people refer to Flannery as the queen of Southern Gothic. Um, I, I got a bit of Cormac McCarthy out of her, actually. So for fans of Cormac McCarthy, they probably will like her as well. Out of the two stories, I think I preferred A Good Man Is Hard to Find because of just how shocking the uh, ending was. Uh, I, I didn't expect it. I didn't, I didn't think she had it in her to write a story such as that. I mean, it, it starts off so blissfully unaware, but there are implications of something bad that's going to happen. But you just keep putting it aside thinking, no, no, it won't happen. But within the course of this 16, 17 page short story, she throws everything at you. And um, there's this wonderful, wonderful uh, tug of war with regards to religion between the uh, the old woman and the misfit who was a person that escaped from prison in t near where they're, they're living. Um, and the story is basically where the family goes on vacation and on this trip the old woman talks about how she used to visit this plantation of sorts and directs them down this road only just as she, just as she remembers that this plantation's in I think Georgia instead of where they are now uh, the car flips they're stranded there this family, this I think this dad, this mum, a couple of kids, and the old woman. They're stranded and they see a car coming, but who is in that car but the misfit? And two other people as well, two young kids I think they are, maybe a bit older. But what happens from there to the end of the short story is truly, truly shocking. Uh, I mean, I was in awe of the, of the writing style that was used. I was in awe of the implications that were used. I like the fact that it can be shocking, but you don't actually s see the violence for the majority of the book, except for at the, at the very end. Uh, so, yeah, she, she's a fascinating writer. A Good Man is Hard to Find is, will probably go down as one of my all-time favorite short stories. I still think my favorite would have to be the one I read in the Don DeLillo collection, um, Angel Esmeralda, I think is what it's called, and that it's human moments in World War Three or human moments during World War Three, which is like this thirty-ish page story about astronauts in space when World War Three is kicking off on Earth. Um, please read it; it's fascinating. Uh, one of his best pieces of writing, um, up there with the opening section to Underworld. Uh, nonetheless, every, everything that rises must converge is also a great short story. And um, a, good, a good one to start with if you're getting into Flannery O'Connor. Not, not that I can say much more about her because that's all I've read. But I do intend on reading more by her now. I truly, truly do. Um, I've got the whole collection of stories here. And I want to get her other book as well. Wise Blood, I think it's called. I want to read that now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sold on her. She, she's, she's fascinating. Um, powerful. Original. So, yeah. Yeah. Truly, truly wonderful writer, Flannery O'Connor. The next one I read is a book that I've been reading for over a month now, and I keep just trudging through it. It's 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 not a long book. It's only about 300 pages. It's Lunar Park uh, by Brad Easton Ellis. But here's the thing: even though it's 300 pages, it's quite it's quite a dense piece of work. There's a lot going on a lot going on in it. Um, but for this section here, for those of you who don't know, it's very meta fictional. 
Uh, Bruce Easton Ellis himself is the main character in the book, and it takes place after everything that's been published up until the start of this book, uh, with the last work being Glamorama. And he lives in the suburbs. Now, the, the chapters that I read, uh, there was one involving him being awoken told that a detective is going to come around and talk to him. Now, here's the funny thing. The detective that comes around and talks to him is none other than Donald Kimball, who is a character in the in Brett Easton Ellis' previous book, American Psycho. And Donald Kimball comes to his house to talk to him about a potential serial killer out there who is replicating serial killings from the book American Psycho. And Donald Kimball, the, the detective in this book, is holding a copy of American Psycho in his hands, reading out passages from the book which replicate what the serial killer in Luna Park is doing. And then he refers to things such as such as saying, you don't have to worry about Brett Easton Ellis because he won't attack you because you are not a character in this book even though it's, it is in this book, Luna Park. Uh, it's very, very fascinating and, and hilarious insightful, brilliantly written. as a great chapter. I didn't see it coming, but the fact that it's self-referential is... I, I love that stuff. I, I fall hard for that stuff. A brilliant, brilliant piece of writing. It's a small chapter. It's like 10 pages, so you can get through it. But then the book... What I've noticed with this book, and I'm about roughly... Yeah, I'm about exactly halfway through it. It has slowly transitioned into horror. I mentioned this in one of my previous videos where I saw a beginning a beginning section uh, where there was horror implications. Well, this turns into an out-and-out -out horror. Now, uh, he, him and his wife go next door to a party and they leave the two young kids alone with a babysitter downstairs. He goes outside and smokes marijuana with, with some of the other guys and when he looks across the paddock in that to his house in the suburbs what he sees is the bedroom light on in his bedroom and there's a figure just standing there uh, staring at him the way it's described in this book is unlike anything i've read in any horror movie in any any horror book it's something that i think stephen king wishes he wrote it th that's how good i think this piece of writing is and it sends shivers down your spine because you're seeing that, but then you also see right below him on the first story, the, the kids and uh, the babysitter, I think her name is Wendy, uh, I'm not quite sure. And he completely freaks out and just sprints across to the house there, goes to his locker, gets the gun out sort of thing. And he's basically, everyone thinks he's crazy. Um, it turns out there's nothing, there's nothing there, although it's implied that it has something to do with this doll that the, 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 um, his daughter has and that it might be alive and attacking them. Um, and everyone just thinks he's gone crazy and or it might be something to do with the marijuana that he's just hallucinating it. But uh, that chapter and the Donald Kimball chapter um, are just many, many reasons why I consider this book to probably be my favourite work by him. It's, it, there is some stuff in here that I find more shocking than American Psycho, but less um, what's the word? Less exhausting, because American Psycho can be a pretty exhausting read, even though I th found it to be an ultimately great read. Uh, although I, don't, I wouldn't recommend people reading this until after they've read his previous work. I probably should have read Glamorama before reading this, because of just um, how uh, referential this book is to other works and his, his life leading, leading up to that point, even though so certain sections of this life portrayed in the book here are fictional. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much why I've been reading this last week. I intend to finish Lunar Park. Um, I intend to finish it by the end of this week. And then I plan on starting one or two big books. In the last video, I talked about Kanazgard, uh, the Morning Star. There's lots of people out there who are uh, giving this high praises. Uh, but it's a thick one. It's like 666 pages. Uh, I keep saying that I want to read it, but I've seen wonderful videos out there, and there's this wonderful uh, podcast. I think it's Chatting Lit, and they talk about Thomas Pinch on them. Uh, it's an hour and a half long. They bring in two people who um, uh, self-professed Pinch on fans, massive fans. They've read almost everything by him. And one in particular talked about how great Against the Day was, how it was one of the greatest reading experiences of the, his life. It's a massive book. It's, it's like close to 1,100 pages. So I think what I'm going to plan on doing is start Kanazgard this weekend. Then when I finish this book, I'm going to get into this one here and read A Gangster Day. I've had this book for uh, ooh, four years now. 
uh, and I picked this up around the same time I picked up Gravity's Rainbow. I've read Gravity's Rainbow now, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad about that. But I hear that this one here, even though it's his longest work, it can quite possibly be his most accessible work. So maybe it won't be as hard to get through as Gravity's Rainbow. I really look forward to reading it. I really, really do. There's some fascinating stuff there. And Canars Guard, it, this will be my first work by him, even though um, everyone says that the series My Struggle is a great, great piece of writing. So there you have it. That's my uh, reading vlog for this week. Um, if you wish to contact me, just leave, leave a comment below or con contact me on Instagram at the, uh, the Reading Fabricator. Other than that, um, have a good day, everyone. See you.